All right, uh, good evening, guys. Uh, Ken at Tortoise Capital. This is the nightly strategy podcast for September 2nd, 2021. So uh, we had a micro gap up today. Uh, pushed to a new all-time high. Uh, it retained uh, a all-time high close, uh, which rested right on the Z2. Uh, so I... Uh, count this as a green day as a as an excursion to the upside we got the three period hull is uh, pointing the way higher um, you have the rl30 slope extension is healthy um, the pcr is grinding upwards and is a good distance away you have um, more than half of the dragon is now north of the z1 boundary and uh, is accelerating up so when they're dragon is sloping upward and compressing you're getting uh, a strong directional move um, let's see we've um, we're still working on a kata 2 type entry with the rl 10s um, putting in higher lows and you notice that the rl 10 has uh, changed over to uh, back to summer so we have a summer fall summer fall summer formation and that's uh, typical of that upward grinding kind of a move uh, the 10 day low and the 30 day low were recently made so that just tells you just how strong this excursion to the upside has been um, that 10 day low is going to start getting higher and start compressing uh, you know tomorrow where the 10 day low is going to be near the edge of the river so that's pretty uh, pretty impressive upward move uh, the two and a half percent sell-off is down here below the Bollinger Band mean at uh, 442.7 um, the five percent sell-off is slightly off the chart here at uh, like 432 so this is a market that's just uh, refusing to lose and uh, grinding upwards And let's take a look at the sectors now. Oh. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the S&P uh, was at 0 0.31 today. The techs in the NASDAQ were down 0 0.05. Two, the worst performer was uh, emerging markets at minus 0.45, so that is uh, starting to reverse the trend that had been uh, had been in play, where the emerging markets were really making gains while the U.S. was suffering. So um, this may be a reversion back to the U.S. Uh, all-day uh, type of a move. Uh, so now the outperformers of the S&P, uh, the Dow was slightly better at 0.37. Treasuries at 0.44. It's flirting with that 150 key price level, and then the uh, the best performer was the uh, Russell at 0.7. Uh, the upside sectors that outperformed today: uh, Simon Property Group is the commercial real estate proxy, 0.45. Wheat and precious uh, wood, and then cut the other lumber. Uh, around 0.5 and 0.6 respectively. Uh, materials up 0.64. Uh, ARC Innovation 0.9. Uh, then a big cluster of sectors that were outperforming from between 1 and 2 percent and that was uh, ARC Genomics and S&P Biotech. Blended Commodities, Ethereum um, at 1.37, blockchain 1.47, clean energy, oil, and Bitcoin all up around 2%. Um, then uh, the leading candidates uh, for the sectors, Moonshots portfolio 2.2, energy 2.5, and then it's not surprising that um, XOP, the oil and gas exploration, is up 3.33, and then um, the individual Targets, uh, Devon Energy up 3.8, Alcoa 2.9, uh, John Deere, another industrial 2.2, Cliff, Coin, and Apple kind of rounding out the outperformers. So this was a pretty good day for the, for the metals and uh, materials. 
Uh, to the downside, the things that are underperforming in sectors first uh, is um, um, we have, whoops, let's get that as a red, if I may. So we have this cluster of uh, Mexico, marijuana, agriculture, and consumer discretionary, basically flat. Um, you have XLK minus 0.11, um, then down to um, the fangs, off 0.56, lithium battery ETFs, 0.65, uh, Brazil and Virgin Galactic, 2 and 3% off, respectively. Then the uh, worst performing companies and targets with uh, Bitcoin uh, minus, uh, or I'm sorry, not Bitcoin, the um, uh, blended large cap crypto uh, trust off 9.6%, Squarespace 0.8, um, then uh, PayPal, Tesla, Microsoft all down around a quarter, um, and then uh, TX and X, the two steel companies, off just a fraction. So they're lagging the other steel companies. So Cliff, to me, looks like a natural, uh, a natural way to play a continuation on um, on that in the future. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at um, at some trades from the chat room. Uh, there's two to look at. Um, the first one is in Apple. Uh, so Apple, um, what I like on this one is the the deliberate patience in um, uh, taking the uh, collapsing dragon there. Uh, and that's set up by um, the first collapsing dragon. So we have a nice gap up, um, and it waits for the, for the rollover. Then the RLXD, that's nestled right in the curve of that dragon right there that that's such a beautiful entry and uh, the target you're looking for is a closure of the gap and, and getting it down to the to yesterday's close and uh, I like taking that one because if you wait for it to make a new low you know uh, you know the low of the day was here so if you wait for this break then you're gonna miss that little segment which is you know a good one-third uh, of the target, so I, I would rather take take the shot now, uh, and then he gets a one two three um, exit, so he makes bank on that very nice orderly move. And when everything's outside of the dragon like that, and then it reverses and crosses up into it, that's normally an indication, right? Uh, what I like here was the discipline of waiting to see the dragon roll over. So now what you have is a lower high. And this sets up like a one, two, three, and now um, you could either take this short here, or short in here like he, like he has. Uh, this would be a, a f another front run, but I don't mind this one uh, waiting for the confirmation because you can still uh, wait for this return back to the um, uh, back to yesterday's close. And you notice that it actually did get there as part of that long sell-off before it tests and then resumes. So um, this extra uh, delay right here waiting for that entry is nice. Um, I like the um, uh, I like cash in the win for 0.8 um, and then there's a it fails to follow through back to the upside because now you're thinking hey this thing could get back to the VWAP but it doesn't it just it barely gets through the dragon and then takes off again. Um, he's got a nice scratch. I like the scratch. I like staying with it on the short side because you now have another lower high to contend with. So everything feels down, and he's staying with the primary direction of the day. Cash is another nice one. And now, uh, now that we're into the last, you know, couple hours of the day, 
uh, he puts into effect the VWAP magnet trade that we just briefed yesterday, and he uses a Kata 2 uh, to do it. That's really nice. Good, Very good form. So now you can actually make that a tight wrist box and gets paid with the move right back to the VWAP and, uh, and earns 2R by putting into practice the exact lesson that we just looked at yesterday. So I just couldn't be happier um, than the, that one right there. Well done. And that was all in uh, Apple. Uh, all right, so the next one up is uh, Pfizer intraday. And we have another, uh, another gap. Um, uh, this was tradable in here on that same kind of rollover and then playing it back. And you think maybe it's going to come down and test. Um, when it doesn't, and then it, uh, that grind comes into a sideways quiet channel, Z3 pinch, that's actually a super pinch. Why? Because it has a uh, very tight pinch on the uh, Bollinger Band Z3s, and uh, all, four, all four regression lines are inside of the pinch. So you have the RL270, which is the purple line, you have the RL90, which is the green line, and then, of course, the 10 and the 30 are inside. So you get this really tight compression. You're thinking that it's going to come down to here as the first target, and then the second target would be yesterday's VWAP. So really, this this would be leg one on the way down and then leg two. And you're only risking that box, and you're getting one, two, three, four, five, six a potential six to one intraday trade on a simple reversion to yesterday's VWAP. So that's worth a shot. But I like the fact that on failure to follow through, he just cuts the loss. Uh, and then he plays a caught a two entry. Here's a low. Here's the higher low. Um, this could have been a little earlier, but I don't mind that he's waiting for the Z3 pinch breakout once again. So that's really nice. And then using the far side uh, Z3 line as the risk as the risk line, it's never really threatened. And then you notice you have this kind of quiet grind going on. Uh, and then um, good things can continue to happen. And he gets this amazing run all the way into the uh, end of the day. So we have the uh, Z3 pinch breakout, um, nice tight stop all the way down. Uh, then you get another Z3 pinch. This could have been an additional entry. That could have been an entry. This was the previous day's high, as he notes. That would have been a logical entry. If you had taken this one, then this would have been the indicated exit, because after a Z3 excursion, you don't want to give back more than that on two positions. But because he's only working on the one position, and he wants to turn that into a swing. He can keep that in play. And then he offloads the turbo at uh, 46.83. So that trade right there, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like much was happening. But he's got an entry at 46.37 with an initial risk at uh, 46.21. So that's 16 cent risk. And then the move from 37 to 83 is 46 cents divided by 16 cents, that's pretty near 3 to 1. Uh, pretty much a 3R win on a single position. So that's pretty nicely managed all the way through. Well done. All right, next up. <clears throat> Pardon me. So just want to uh, talk about this one as a um, as an as an early morning pattern, and uh, here's our quiz for the day. What pattern are we looking at here? Uh, 
uh, Kata 2, correct, from Chi Wang Chung. So we have the, you know, a low, a higher low. And uh, you could wait for this RL10 excursion, and that would make an entry here to be a um, um, the emerging dragon. If you had taken it a little bit earlier in either one of those two positions, then you could probably call that a, a, a true Kata 2. But any entry in this area is feeling pretty good. Um, you wouldn't be wrong to use this box as your risk, but you might also uh, come all the way down to the Bollinger Band Mean and just take that one as the risk and then pick up the Bollinger Band Mean sort of as a, uh, as a stop. And as long as it stays north and to the west of that rising line, this also, this kind of gives you almost a, a time series trade where um, uh, it, it should it, if should keep working along that parallel line and you're giving it this much room all the way down so the Bollinger Band mean acts like the managers the manager stop okay so um, that would be our trade frame um, and, and then, uh, you know, we get bingo, bango. Now, at this point, I would be ready to, you know, take a, uh, oops, wrong, wrong dot, sorry. You know, I would be happy with um, I'd be looking for that exit somewhere up in here, I think. Any, uh, you could get that exit as a sniper. You could get the PSAR dot as a sniper. You might be willing to give... See, I don't like letting that come all the way back to the managerial loss because now I'm giving up. Um, I'm giving up that entire move. You know, all this stuff that you work so hard to get. I don't like letting it come all the way back to the Bollinger Band mean. And then... Uh, I get to capture, sure, I get to capture this much, but I'm giving up all of this, so that doesn't feel correct to me. So um, one of these other sniper exits uh, should be appealing to you by that point, okay? And now we got uh, the possibility for a re-entry in here take on it now we're looking for that kata 2 in here and uh, we're probably looking for um, a wrist box of uh, probably something like this. Um, you might have uh, elected for an additional uh, Kata 2 up in here because you're still getting that those higher lows um, uh, helping you out. But now you can feel that thing starting to stall. And uh, you would not be wrong having taken uh, taken this exit in here. Oops. You would not have been wrong taking that exit. Uh, and then it kind of grinds to a halt. Uh, and then fails going into the close. So... Uh, in retrospect, that kind of shows you the power of that Kata 2 structure. You know, your original uh, entry way back in here. Or not later than here. Uh, and all that is good all the way up. Um, this one... 
Uh, this is the start of the day. So one thing I know I will uh, I'll you know draw that um, you know that vertical blue line to kind of show the you know the separation uh, between yesterday and today. And now I have something like uh, a gap up and then this low of the day. Um, I, I'd like to just draw that as a reference. And as long as it stays north of that horizontal blue line, um, then we're pretty happy with this. And then what I would, uh, when I look at that little structure on the, uh, around the entry, you know, this is feeling like uh, gap up, And then it's moving out along the Z3. Then you get a sell-off down here to the low of the day. And now it, it's feeling like uh, it's starting to move up again. So this is one where I might take... Oops. As I put a uh, trade frame box on this thing, I might just wait for it to break above the high of the RL10. I might like that enough right there and just take that as an entry like right now uh, believing that it, uh, it rejected the sell-off. It rejected going back to close the gap down. You know, it didn't do this. Um, it did not come down and uh, return to uh, yesterday's price. It, uh, it held and instead instead of coming all the way down here it actually held support um, and then is resuming so uh, and now you notice that it has crossed the VWAP and uh, everything is pointing to the upside so this is where I might take this entry um, at one Let's see here. Step. I might take the entry at one or at two, and uh, I'm probably using as my stop uh, if I take the entry at one, I probably just want this uh, and just say the low of the day. And if I'm taking two, I'm probably. Uh, I might just choose uh, the VWAP. So I might come over to the VWAP and I might pick that as my... That's if I was going to wait for the entry at 2, I might just pick the VWAP. But if I was taking 1, I might be... Uh, I might look like that. Okay. So I like the entry at 1. Uh, when it crosses the VWAP and it's rising after a gap up, uh, I usually figure that's good enough for me and I, I like to get started. Um, and just get into it and start working it. So I would, uh, I'd be ready to take this one long here and stop at uh, the yellow box. And then you can pick anything you want in there um, to manage your stop. This would have been sort of a logical entry after it makes another Kata 2 and an Emerging Dragon. You could have either gotten it quick here uh, or waiting for it to make a new high of the day. In this case, I like the new high of the day because now I'm closer to 2R in hand. And, uh, and then anywhere in here, uh, you can raise that stop. You know, by this time, I'm probably no lose plus dinner for two and just leave that in place. And now when I see it starting to stall uh, out here, I probably uh, raise this up up to around here 
and just draw the ruthless line across um, and uh, and see what we got yeah so I would probably be out uh, right up in here oops um, I would be out um, probably here or not later than here uh, but in either case, you get a really nice trade on. Now, one thing we just want to check is when something runs that far that fast and now the rest of the market starts to fail, um, I, I just find the peak of the day and run that down to the Z, uh, to the VWAP. And then I say from the VWAP down, this thing could not only get back to the VWAP, But it could then put in the second leg, which would take it all the way back, basically, to this opening cluster. And then if that failed, you know, um, it could come, the leg three would be down here to yesterday's, um, yesterday's VWAP. All right. So that's how I look at legs one, two, and three. Um, and then I like to, we would, we could have made bank on the first two positions uh, and then um, one thing you notice, yep, comes all the way down by the end of the day, um, basically to the, you know, to that little, that second leg, um, second leg down. And there were plenty of opportunities inside here to get some collapsing dragons in place and take advantage of that long take advantage of that long slide so make hay while you can and then when there's no more follow-through this whole um, consolidation range in here is sort of typical of topping action and the rest of the market was starting its slide um, and so Alcoa still remained green for the day but the early burst of buying power kind of quickly faded um, and now I think there's more room to the upside in the metals, but um, that's one of the reasons why we like trading them intraday is that this gives us really nice percentage moves and lots of liquidity and small uh, spreads, so you're not losing much on the spread and um, lots of volume. And it's a substantive company, and it's you know the opposite of uh, a meme stock. Okay. Um, let's shift now to the uh, to the daily report. Oh yeah, Susan asked, uh, "Is number two where it crosses the RL10?" Yeah, that's the. Um, I normally I, I build the ladder up like one, two, three. I normally like to try to put in um, an aggressive, a normal, and a conservative entry. Uh, which kind of equates to how much um, how much confirmation that I want, and I tried to I tried to be more aggressive on the entry, and I don't want to have as much certainty um, as I maybe used to have. I'd like to be in the position sooner, and then manage the uncertainty rather than waiting to be certain that there was a good move and I missed it, All right? Okay, uh, so dashboard one, uh, bullish normal conditions, uh, overbought on all dimensions, and we're very close on the three-day. That's getting very close to overbought. Um, uh, the risk Z is still giving us a favorable upside for swings. That's all good. Emerging markets still is a potential short side. And today was the first day where it hasn't really outperformed in a while. So it's starting to, uh, uh, they're starting to digest the gains. It's starting to stall out a little bit. Um, uh, IBM, Coke, McDonald's, Walgreens, and the Dow 30. 
in the uh, min pains, max pains, Pfizer, Nucor. Um, on the Dow 30, a ton of dojis, uh, only three auto framers though. And uh, again, no more, no new breakouts on the uh, different time frames. Uh, ETFs, a ton of, a uh, ton of dojis, uh, a breakout in utilities as a defensive play, and then otherwise it was, uh, it was the three energies. There's oil, um, energy sector itself. And then oil exploration were the big, uh, the big three winners on a percentage basis today. Um, I like Walmart at two point five to one, and I think I like Pfizer at five to one on the auto framer. Uh, diamonds and uh, materials are still in the in the uh, ballpark here for the uh, daily squeezes. I like that. And SPY is pretty close to the 2.0 threshold at 1.9. That's good. And uh, mid caps are right there with them. Um, and so is the Russell at 1.8. So the U.S. market is really kind of poised to to start. An explosive move and the upside is the path of least resistance uh, and then finally the multi time frame NDX uh, Walgreens looking good McDonald's and the Dow itself Cisco conventional tech was pretty strong and then a ton of a ton of the ETFs um, SPY energy uh, the globals have been pretty good. There's Asia List Japan, Japan, and Euro Asia Blend, and the European 350. And then uh, the, the real estate still, we talked about that yesterday, still looking pretty good. All right, that's everything I want to cover tonight. We'll get this published and posted, and we'll be ready for them tomorrow. Thanks very much, guys, for your kind attention.